Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Bastyr University Masters of Science in Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine webinar. I have Dr. Angela Tsung on the line with me today, and she will be presenting uh, some information about the program. I am Erin Bailey. I am the admissions advisor for this program here at Bastyr, and I will also be available to answer any questions that you may have about the admissions process. Angela, if you're ready, you're welcome to begin. Good. Thank you, Erin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today for the webinar or watching the recording afterwards. Again, my name is Angela Zeng. I am a licensed acupuncturist and also the chair um, at uh, for the Department of Acupuncture and East Asian Medicine. Um, just a little brief history about myself. Uh, I am also a alumni for Bastyr. I graduated from the master program and also our doctoral program. And I have been teaching with Bastyr since uh, 2000. And so I've been taking various roles. So today I'm hoping that I'll give you um, some information, basic information about the program and understand that some of you actually are in different uh, spot of the admission process. And so if you have specific questions, if anything that wasn't able to answer at the introduction part, please don't hesitate to contact us or ask your question. So at this time, the Department of Acupuncture and East Asian Medicine, we do offer two programs. One is the master's degree in acupuncture and oriental medicine, the one that we're discussing today. And we also have a doctor's degree, which is the doctoral of acupuncture and oriental medicine program. And for that one is actually a post uh, degree, postdoctoral degree. And so it will be for students that finishing or graduated with the master and then enter the doctorate program. Um, just give you some information. Currently, we have seven uh, full-time faculty that are trained in U.S. and China, and majority of us has been with Bastyr for many years. Um, for me, I am not the longest with Bastyr, and I have been here uh, as a faculty since 2000 and as a core faculty since uh, 2006. We also have uh, 21 talented adjunct faculty that work with the department with our students either in the didactic setting and also in the clinical training. And we see this being very important is because um, a lot of the practitioner actually bring their unique styles and their uh, experiences and then clinical wisdom to help our students to get trained in this field with their skills, with their knowledge. And we, since Bastyr is a multidisciplinary school, we have classes that are taught from faculties from other departments as well. For example, basic sciences, nutrition, psychology, and um, so it's it's opportunity of not only to get to to have uh, to learn from faculty within uh, the profession, but also from other disciplinary as well. A little bit about the MS AOM. It is accredited by ACOM, uh, that's our accrediting body. And this program length is three years or 12 quarters. Um, we only enroll one time a year, which is in the fall quarter and uh, program ends in the end of the summer, which is in around September. And the focus of the program is acupuncture and also Chinese herbal medicine. How does the program structured? In the first year, it's an opportunity to get foundational courses in both basic sciences and also traditional Chinese medicine. Um, these are foundation courses and they build on each other starting from fundamentals in the TCM and then opportunity to learn from the pathology diagnosis. But during this year, students also have the opportunity to start with a clinical observation, which includes uh, at our best year center for natural health, working in the regular 
uh, with the upper year students in our teen care, but also has opportunity to actually observe uh, supervisors or faculty as they treat patients. And the second year, there are classes that build on the foundation, which includes therapeutic classes. How do we actually utilize the acupuncture or uh, herbal medicine um, what we treat patient. It's based on clinical cl uh, clinical syndromes, clinical diagnosis, and discussions about how these are applied and utilized. Um, not only acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, but also nutrition as well. And the students now becomes their, uh, start their internship training. And what does that mean is then they will be in charge of seeing the patients in different uh, in different forms so they can they are starting with working together with their uh, classmates uh, as a, as a co-interns and then seeing patients and then also with later on in the third year as the skills develop more they also work with upper year and with new students as well first year observation students in the third year then the, in the didactic aspect of it, then will be more of advanced theory classes. Um, and then they enter the clinical, uh, integrated clinical internship. So their acupuncture skills now more comfortable with the how to, how to treat the patient. And we add more in terms of the herbal training in that third year. Um, this is also the year where students also get to learn on how to set up their practice, what is the, uh, what is the uh, uh, legislation talk about, um, regulations, um, that's also occurred in the third year. In terms of the clinical training for, uh, for our students, the main site is at the Bastyr Center for Natural Health. And other than the teaching clinic down in Bastyr Center at Seattle, we also have community clinics. We work with neighbor care clinics. Uh, there are two of their clinic that we, our students are able to observe. Um, Providence Mount St. Vincent and uh, Providence Regional Cancer Partnership. And so these clinics, what the opportunity gave the students are is that the patient base are a little bit different. Some have particular conditions, for example, Providence Regional Cancer Partnership, we mainly see cancer patients as they go through their Western treatments, then uh, the, the patients are referred to acupuncture. And so we, you can actually learn how we utilize acupuncture as a supportive treatment as patients gone through their Western treatment in treating cancer. And um, Providence Mount St. Vincent is a nursing facility. Neighbor care has different uh, uh, patient populations. So it actually opportunity for our students to get exposed to different settings and learn from different uh, patient conditions and also work with different population. And what I'm showing you here with the Doctorate of Acupuncture Medicine uh, completion program is actually not offered yet at Bastier. So this is a proposed program that we are currently working on, which I wanted to just share with you. And this is gonna be a one year post master degree program. And the guideline is being updated by our accrediting body. And we're based on the guidelines, what we are working on is to develop this um, one year post, uh, post the master degree to give the opportunity for students to increase their clinical skills um, in this one year training. And so what does that mean is for, uh, for, for you is that once you complete your master degree, you actually have two options to continue further your training. One is with the DACM and the other is what I mentioned really early are the other program, which is the DOM, Doctor of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. So why Bastier? Well, you are receiving a university degree from Bastier and I would really encourage you, if you haven't done so, is to come out to look at the campus. For me, as, uh, as I'll just use me as an example. Um, I started as last year as, uh, as a student um, to uh, study the master in the master program and i always kind of jokingly teasing that you know one foot at best year is really hard to leave it's not only that it's such a beautiful campus you're able to there are natural surroundings you can do trails um there are 
the facility itself, the student village, the dining common, um, but for me also is the, the, the faculty, the staff that helped me as a student to become a practitioner and now to also be part of the educator as well. So it's a very supportive environment. Um, we do have different clinical sites rotation to be able to expose the clinicians or students for different uh, different population, different conditions. Um, there, is, there are various support, tutoring support, library, cafeteria, or the dining common, and um, uh, the opportunity for you to encounter or work with students from other disciplinary. Um, Know, opportunity to share patient, discuss patient cases from the naturopathic department and from nutrition. And so it is a it is it is an opportunity um, for their the opportunities are there and you can actually make it really unique for you and for your future. So in terms of the admissions requirement, um, Aaron, would you like to take over this part? Sure, I'd be happy to. So this is Erin K. Sorry, Bailey. I am the admissions second. advisor for the MSAOM and DAOM. No problem. Angela, can you continue to hear me? Yes, I can. I just it, it, it broke off just a little bit okay, in the middle. Okay, one moment, please. You can? Okay, okay, excuse us, everybody. So, um, just real quickly regarding yes, the admissions requirements, you uh, can go to the application portal on the bastier.edu page and um, you can create a login and a password in that application portal so that you can um, go in and look at the requirements for the application at your leisure and save things without actually having to submit the paperwork until you're ready. So the application will require a personal statement, two letters of recommendation. They do prefer that you have at least one letter from an academic source and at least one letter from a professional source. You will need official transcripts from any institutions that you have attended in the past, uh, a resume or a curriculum vitae, and also the application fee. If any of you have the opportunity to come visit our campus, I strongly encourage you to do so because not only will you have um, so many opportunities to connect with students and faculty and um, review the campus and what that has to offer, but we will also be able to waive your $75 application fee. Um, you really do need to demonstrate on your application that you have um, taken the proactive me measures to communicate with people in the acupuncture field, to do your own background research, to really feel like you are dedicated to this program and know what you're getting into. And if anybody has any questions about um, what that might look like or, or specific questions regarding the application or admissions process, I'm available at any time to assist with you. Um, you can call 425-602-3332 and schedule an in-person or on-phone advising appointment. Um, so let's just briefly go over the prerequisites. Uh, if you have a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution that is regional accreditation, you must also have a 2.5 GPA or higher. You will need a general biology course with a lab, and that is an allied health level class. General chemistry with lab, also an allied health level class. Now, let me just take one moment to explain the difference between a science major level class and an allied health level class. Science major coursework is uh, for those people who are going on to be microbiologists or MDs or, or you know, um, organic chemistry people, those, sites, those kinds of fields. They're generally typically more rigorous and they will also always have a lab. Um, 
that is not required as a prerequisite from this program, but you are more than welcome to take those science major level classes if you would like to. Um, I am a resource to you if you have any questions about how to determine the difference in the levels of the class. So please don't hesitate to reach out for me to me for that kind of information. Um, in addition to those that I've mentioned so far, you will also need a general psychology course, an intermediate algebra or higher course, and a general physics. Um, something to note here is that a lab is not required for the physics class. However, if your physics class happens to have had a lab, that's great, no problem. Okay, so a little bit about the application timeline at this point. Uh, March 15th is our application priority deadline. What that means is that if you apply by March 15th, you will be eligible for the most amount of grant money that Bastier offers to their entering students. Um, the Bastier grant is a one-time grant that you'll receive um, as you come in, and that amount is related to your GPA and your prerequisite coursework, the strength of your application, and your performance in your interview. You will still be eligible for a Bastier grant if you apply after that priority deadline. However, you are not eligible for quite as much information. Um, two to three weeks after submitting your complete application, you will be contacted by us to set up your interview. Um, your, uh, we offer interviews scheduled weekly, and uh, Donna Hyatt, our interview coordinator, will go over with you any options that you have for time. And typically, within one to two weeks, you will have a decision letter regarding um, your admission if you are admitted. Um, so additional resources, uh, you can reach me anytime at my email, ebailey at bastier.edu. You are also more than welcome to call the front office to schedule a phone advising appointment or office appointment with me. Um, then they can be reached at 425-602-3332. If you are interested in speaking with current acupuncture students that work with us as um, work-study uh, students to do student outreach, you can reach out to them at studentoutreach at bastier.edu. And finally, if you have any questions regarding the financial aid process or what your eligibility might be, you can reach them at fineaid at bastier.edu. Angela, is that the last slide? Yes. So okay. thank you, Erin. So at this time, we can just ask if anybody has any questions. OK, it doesn't seem like we're receiving any questions at this time. Okay, well then, uh, please don't hesitate to contact either Angela or I at any time. We're more than welcome to um, assist you with anything. Oh, and as you see that we did receive a few questions. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, so the first question is, I have been in the workforce for several years, so I don't have an academic reference. Will two professional references work as well? Okay, so I'd be happy to answer this one. Um, you may submit two professional references if you cannot have an academic reference. And we do understand that people come to this program through all walks of life, and sometimes it's been quite a while since you've been in school. However, uh, do try your best to reach out to anybody. Uh, it really does help to understand what your um, the breadth of your experience is like if we can hear from uh, those two sides of your life. Um, the next question is, do most students in the master's program work while in the program or are most of them full-time focused on study? Uh, I can speak to this one as well. Um, you can work 
you know, five to 10 hours per week, but we really do recommend that, especially as you begin, that you devote your time to your academic study. Um, it is a rigorous program, and we feel like it's a better idea for you to get your feet wet and to understand how you're um, managing the workload and, you know, if you have any stress issues or anything like that before you take on um, significant um, additional responsibilities. Okay, let's see what else we have. What areas do you see most graduates being hired in? For example, are most starting their own businesses? Are they working in hospitals or are they working as or working for naturopaths? Angela, would you like to address that one? Yes, I would definitely address this one. So many of our graduates actually graduated after they graduate is um, they start their private practice. And this can actually take various form. And it can be that they rent a place and then they're on their own. Um, it can be that they join other people's practice, whether it's naturopathic or it's chiropractic's office. Um, many of them actually, I would think is uh, uh, by joining, it can be a contractor base, or that means that you you rent the room, you rent the room, you see your patient, you share patient, you may share the common areas, um, but it's not being hired by the clinic. And I think that's probably that most our uh, at least many years ago, that was kind of the trend for most of our students. However, in the past few years, we do have more students, uh, I wish to say more graduates, that one is they get hired by a clinic. Um, so some of our alum actually opened up multiple clinics and then they hire the the new graduates to be part of their clinic. And now there are also opportunities to work in hospital and get hired in hospital. So I would say this is an area that we are expanding, especially if some of you um, uh, following the national news in terms of the opioid crisis. And so there are opportunity, and but I think it's still taking some time. At this time, best year, is in hospital. So we work with Providence Everett. We work with our doctoral program is in the um, Harborview Medical Center. Um, and so programs are into hospital and that also lead to some, I would say much less of our graduate get hired in the hospital compared to starting their own practice um, as a sole proprietor, as a partnership or join other people's practice. Um, I think those are the, is there anything I miss, Erin? No, I think that's good. Okay. Um, the next question I have, Angela, maybe you can help with, it is, uh, what is a realistic starting salary after graduation? Whew, that's a, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I, you know, we, we did our alum survey and um, I don't have it with me. I can try to find out what is the, what is the, um, uh, what is the earning or the salary that that student get. But I can tell, I, you know, just from the student feedback or graduate feedback is actually, it ranges really a lot. Um, we had, actually, I just talked to somebody um, who graduated two years ago, and uh, she was telling me that her last month, December, she saw 120 patients, which is her max. She worked four days, and really, that's one hour patient, and, you know, so you can kind of do a little estimate on that, but again, that is somebody who put the effort into um, starting their practice and get it happening, and um, we also have other graduates who actually took a little bit longer time away first because of family, because of other, and starting their practice as a part-time basis. And so um, I'm sorry, I don't really have an exact number. Um, I will try to uh, get to the survey and see if we can get a number for it. Thank you, Angela. I'll take the next question. It is, does the curriculum change for students who are dual enrolled in the naturopathic and TCM programs? So if you were enrolled in the naturopathic doctorate program, which is a four-year degree, you would actually enroll in the five-year track for that program, and you would complete the first two years of your naturopathic doctorate and then begin 
um, the three years of the acupuncture program. So <clears throat> there may be some areas of slight overlap, but really the, the way that they've stretched out the schedule is to make sure to accommodate all of the requirements of the acupuncture program to be completed concurrently with all of the requirements of the ND program. So it's not a truncated uh, program. When you add it as a dual degree, it is the full program. Um, so I think I would I would add a little bit is that um, they are they are a few classes um, that is covered in both program and so if you are in the dual degree some of those occurred in the acupuncture program get waived out because for example like practice management or um, the herbal preparation lab that as a as a dual degree student, you will have it with botanical medicine. So um, the ones that offered with the acupuncture degree um, will not, you will get waived out of those. So there are yeah. of those classes. Correct. But you do not receive any less acupuncture training than you would if you Correct. completed it on its own. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Um, okay. So the next one is when does the fall quarter start? And that is in the last week of September. Um, and the following question is, do you have an idea of when the fourth year doctorate completion program will be accredited? So we, um, our plan is to submit the program this year. Um, and then it just, it, um, it kind of depends on our accrediting body when they can get through the accrediting process. And so um, if you are entering the first year next year, um, our hope is by your first year that the program is in the process to be approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question I have is, when do applications have to be in for sure? So I think what you're asking me is, what is the final, final deadline cutoff? No applications will be received. Um, this is, uh, there's occasions where this will be on a case-by-case -case basis, but I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you all to not wait to the last minute to do this. Um, I would really prefer that you have your applications in by May at the latest. However, if you have any challenges or difficulties with that deadline, uh, please just communicate with me so that I can understand your situation and I can take any uh, steps to assist you from there. Um, let's see. The next question is, Angela, are you seeing insurance companies covering acupuncture or do you know if most businesses are having patients that pay out of pocket for the service? Well, thank you for the questions. Um, I would say um, in my, in my uh, how many years, 16 years of practice, uh, more and more insurance company are covering acupuncture services. And of course, it all depends on what kind of a plan that um, your, your patient uh, is enrolled in because there are, um, they are there are programs that a uh, patient actually has no copay and they have 12 visits a year and they are depends on condition they have different number of visits um, and so I think at this time um, in terms of practice there are there are practitioners that who take insurance um, and they are practitioner actually chose not to do insurance and so it can be a cash uh, pay practice and still get full or that you want to go through the insurance route and they are patient utilizing their insurance so it's uh in terms of coverage yes it has been expanding um in terms of uh patient wise you still have both like patient who pay out of pocket versus utilizing insurance okay thank you very much uh, the next question I see is, I have a BA and an extra six hours in anatomy and physiology one and two. Is there an alternative route for admissions requirements? Um, so this is one of those scenarios, again, where I would ask you to reach out to me so that I could talk with you about the specifics. 
Um, our prerequisite classes are there for a reason. You really do need that training to be prepared for the program as a whole, but I would be happy to talk with you about your specific situation and address any uh, opportunities or, or um, solutions we might be able to come up with. Um, next question. I am a sociology major. Would it be better to get a letter of recommendation from my program or from one of my science professors? Um, you know, when you're choosing who you get your letters of recommendation from, keep in mind that you want to pick someone who can best speak to your appropriateness for this program and who knows you well enough in an academic or professional sense to truly express to us why you would be an excellent Bastier candidate for this program as well. So the specifics of who they are and what your relationship with them are perhaps not as important as um, whether or not they're able to present you um, and let us know really who you are in the capacity of your relationship. Um, you are well and welcome to send more than one letter of or more than two letter of recommendations if you would like. That is no problem. Um, the next question I see is when would be the best time to come schedule a visit to meet the both of you? Uh, what I would recommend in this case is for you to contact um, me by email. Again, my email is e Bailey. That's spelled B A I L E Y at bastier.edu. Um, Angela is very busy at both the clinic and campus, so if you would contact me directly, it would give me the opportunity to review our schedules. But we would love to have you, and we're always looking forward to meeting with students. So please go ahead and send, reach out to me, and I will set that up. Um, do you prefer an academic advisor or academic professor? I would uh, really prefer an academic professor, if possible, in that scenario. Um, okay, final question that I see. How many applicants do you take a year? Uh, Angela, what would you say has been the largest cohort? Um, our largest largest cohort, I would say, seventy students in one year. However, I think at this time, with um, with the number of programs that's going on in our space, I would say sixty. Okay. Students. Yeah. So that's that. I I would say that. There's not too much capacity for larger class sizes than that, um, but I have not, I will also say that I have not experienced that uh, a student who had met the requirements and was an excellent candidate would be turned away for anything like that. So I would not see that as an issue of concern. Um, Okay, I think we've addressed all the questions. Um, I really want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, we're very proud of this program, and it's great to have an opportunity to talk with you. And uh, we welcome any questions or concerns. If you would like to schedule an advising appointment with me, please do call 425-602-3332. And uh, Angela, thank you so much for your time today as well. Well, thank you, Aaron, and thank you, everybody, for participating. And just like Aaron said, um, if you do come and visit and have opportunity, please do come to talk to you, visit classes or visit the clinic and talk to your faculty as well. Um, talk to faculty, talk to students, just to see how their experience at Bastier is. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, and have a nice day.